Good evening, everybody. Well, it's great to be here at church. Amen. Well, I don't know about you, but I've decided just to come and have a good time. So I trust that you came here with the same kind of intention. Amen. Now, before I share God's word, I want to uh, congratulate uh, Brother Les and Sister Elaine, if you kindly please stand, and maybe come to the front Good now rather than later. Brother Les and Sister Elaine have been married for 48 years. So, <laughs> so they are celebrating their 48th wedding anniversary. Isn't that a long time? All right, so if, listen, I, I've just got some good news for you. If they can make it, we can make it. <laughs> Amen. I thought it was 38 when Pastor Wesley brought me the notice. He said, 48. I said, wow, that's almost two years short for 50. So, well, you know, well done. Stand there, Brother Les. I'll come and pray with you in a minute. Well done. And Brother Les, you and Auntie Elaine, we appreciate you. Now, not many people know this, but Brother Les and Auntie Elaine were Catholics before. And uh, about how long ago did you get saved? About yeah, about 15 years ago, they gave their hearts to the Lord, got born again, got saved. In our ch- they're in 12 years in our church. And, uh, you know, let me share this. Brother, Brother Les, I won't tell you his age, but Brother, Brother Les is not a young man. You know what I'm saying? In, in terms of chronological age, he's, he's kind of moved on. But you know, I, I've never seen him to be unfaithful. That's the truth. And um, as the pastor of the church, I watched him every Wednesday. He's in service. Every Sunday, he's in service. When he drove the combi, he would never, ever fail to rock up. He drove the combi week after week, after week, after week. So, you know, the words that come to me, Brother Les and Auntie Elaine, is that a faithful man and a woman will abound in the blessings of God. So I'd like you please to stand up as I pray for them. Put your agreement with my agreement. May the Lord bless them. And uh, may the Lord, you can face me. May the Lord bless them. Congratulations, first of all, Auntie Elaine. I'm proud of you. Amen. I don't have a mom and dad, but you're like my mom and dad, right? <laughs> Amen. So we love you very much. We appreciate you. I know sometimes I do give you a hiding. Well, you still love me, right? <laughs> yeah, Auntie Elaine, if you don't know, Auntie Elaine and I constantly fight. You know, we got this thing between us. But we love you guys. We appreciate you. So, Father, as I lay my hands upon them, I thank you for their lives. I thank you, Lord, for adding them to the ministry. I thank you, Lord, for blessing them, Lord, all these years. 48 of marriage, marriage years. Wow. Lord, you've kept them. And Lord, I pray as a priest of the Most High God as I lay my hands upon them. Lord, let your face so shine upon them. Open doors for them. Let them, Lord God, see with their eyes that in the latter years of their life that God is a good God. Lord, that you would bless them, open doors for them, Let things come from the east, the west, the north, and the south. Thank you for their faithfulness. Lord, may we follow the example in the mighty. I release the anointing and the spirit of the Lord upon them. Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Clap your hands for them. Hallelujah. I mean, that's a long time, 48 years. You may be seated tonight. Don't worry about Brother Les. Don't be in a hurry. Stay there. Don't be in a hurry. Good thing is that we don't charge you a fee for lying on the carpet. All right. But when, when people fall under the anointing, then just remain there and let, let the Lord get it saturated the Spirit of God. Now, we had a great service on Sunday. Amen. Uh, one of the things, if um, I spend some time with the leaders on Monday and... Um, I said and communicated this with the people, the leaders, that our approach to church is going to be a little bit different. We want to simplify things. We don't want church to be complicated. I think simplicity is the way. What we will do in future, and maybe I should share this, that on Sundays, 
Our services on Sundays will be geared to connecting people to God. That means that will be our primary focus on a Sunday. That means with the praise, the worship, and the word, which will be an inspir- you know, a word of inspiration. We'll be connecting our, our people to God. That means I want you to come on Sunday, and I want you to meet with God. I want you to love God. I want you to feel God's presence. I want you to have an encounter, a God kind of encounter on a Sunday. And a witness day, oh, right, maybe I should come back to the witness day, but a Thursday is connecting people to people. So that means it's great. I encourage all of you, if you're not in a life group, get into a life group. If you don't have a life group in your area, and if you have been a believer for some years, I encourage you, start a life group where you are. Maybe it's three people or four or five, but start somewhere and let the Lord begin to use you so that you can encourage people, minister to people, and pray for people and start to grow that. So the life group, the whole intention of the life group is to connect people to people so that you can have relationships, develop relationships, pray for one another, support one another. Pastor Zubeda and I are just two individual people. We can only be uh, at one place at one time. We can't be everywhere. So, of course, we need more people to come on board to help us with the work of the Lord. So, Thursday, which is our life group day, will be connecting people to people. And then, of course, any other day will be connecting the church to the world and connecting the world back to the church. That means all of us, I want to encourage you, all of us to become evangelists. What do I mean by becoming an evangelist? In other words, share the good news of Christ. Bring people to church. Invite people. Invite friends. Invite family. Because we must save people. We must communicate the good news of the gospel. Say amen to that. We mustn't just end up a family church. We have a mission. We have an assignment. We must save people. Would you tell your neighbor that we must begin to save people? All right, so use up every opportunity, buy up every opportunity to welcome somebody out there to come to church, share the gospel with them. You say to me, but pastor, maybe they're not interested. You'll be surprised. You will be surprised. Just a word you would say, a sentence you would communicate will be a seed sown into the lives of their lives, and they will respond to that. Amen. You may not think you're important, but you are important in the economy of God. Say amen. All right. And then, of course, Wednesday night, what will Wednesday night be? It's more discipleship night, prayer meeting, discipleship, and, you know, we can, we can go deeper in the Word of God on a Wednesday. Is that okay? All right. So I want to share with you um, um, along the lines of great grace. And my two foundational scriptures will be Psalms chapter 5, or Psalms 5, verse 12. It says, For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous with favor. I want you to get excited now. With favor, you will surround him with a shield. That communicates two things to us. Number one, if you fall in the category of righteous, which you are, Because if you serve Christ, and you are, and I'm serving Christ, we are automatically, according to the word, the righteousness of God. Now that we are the righteousness of God, not based on on kind of works and on merit, but based just on God's love for us and the grace of God towards us, then we are the righteous. Then God's word says, for you, O Lord, will bless the righteous. Now, please don't fail or forget to understand that the word bless is an empowerment that comes on our life. So it's an empowerment that comes on you. So again, God blesses us because we are the righteous. So may I remind you that God's blessing is on your life. So he says here, for you, O Lord, will bless the righteous. But now watch with what? With favor. I like that. For you, Lord, will bless the righteous. In other words, you will empower the righteous to prosper. You will empower them with divine enablement to do awesome things. And, Lord, you will surround them with favor like a shield. 
That means it may not be evident in your life, but keep your eyes open for the favor of God. It will come in doses. Once you start to see the favor begin to fall on your life, it begins to multiply. And it just grows and grows and grows. And the more you become kind of aware of it, the more you walk in it. You see that? In the next scripture, I want to share with you John chapter 1 verse 17. It says, For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. So the law was given through Moses, but grace, unmerited favor, the kindness of God came to you through Christ. Grace and truth came to us through Jesus Christ. Amen. That means your eyes have been opened. God's truth has come to you. God's grace now has come into your life. So along those lines of great grace, I want to share just a word about, and maybe I should just, you know, kind of say it like this. You are really chosen of God. All right. Now, now I'm going to go a little bit deeper now because tonight is discipleship. Just follow with me. So open up your ears, open up your heart, and just grab the Word of God. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3 to 4. Blessed be the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who had blessed us, who had empowered us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as He had chosen us in Him, so that tells you something about yourself. That it was not a mistake that you came into the church. It's not a mistake you got born again. God specifically chose you. Why? I don't know. Why He chose me? I don't know. But this I know. According to the Word, He chose me. This, this is what I know about it. He chose you. It's according as He had chosen us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love. Isn't that awesome? Now, in the Amplified Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4 says, Even as in His love, He chose us, actually picked us out. That's awesome. You know, it's kind of like when you're buying fruit and veggies, and if it's displayed, you pick the nicest one. God kind of picks you out. He picked us out of the world. See, other people may not approve of it. Other people don't see the good that God sees. But God has seen something in our lives that He's vitally interested in. Because even as in His love, He chose us, actually picked us out for Himself as His own in Christ. So now watch this. Before you were formed, before Christ formed you and I, He knew you. That's big now. Before your Creator formed you, He knew you. You are a special, one of a kind, a word out the mouth of God. That means before you were created, you existed in the mind of God. In other words, you were thought already in God's mind. So before your mom and dad conceived you, God already knew you. You see, God doesn't start at the beginning. God always starts at the end. And when He starts at the end... Then he goes to the beginning and works it through, but he always starts with the end in mind. That means when God is relating to you and I, he's relating already with you as a success. Because God starts with the end and then goes back to the beginning and takes his steps through. See, all we sometimes see is the beginning. We don't see the end, but God sees the end. 
So there's something about you that God already knows. And the devil hates. And that's why some of the stuff that you deal with, you're dealing with some of the challenges in your life simply because the devil is afraid of you. He's afraid that if God's full potential is unleashed in your life, you can do great damage to the kingdom of darkness. Just think about that. You might have been minding your own business, going your own way, doing your own thing, but God picked you. God chose you. And you may tend an excuse to say, but God, I have all of this junk. I'm dealing with all of these problems. And this is what he says. He says, well, I chose you. But God, is there a reason you chose me? No, I chose you because I wanted to. You see, we, we, we're so quick to relate with human reasoning because when you're chosen for a team or you're chosen out of a whole group of people for a particular job, they look for certain things. But God chooses you before. And He doesn't have to give you a reason. He just chooses you. Are you with me? So you must never doubt this reality for a moment. Now, watch 1 Timothy 3.16. Just keep on listening to me. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. For God was manifest in the flesh. In the NIV Bible it says, and he appeared in a body. God appeared in a body. The Amplified says, and he, God, was made visible in human flesh. That's what the scripture is talking about. Now watch this. God knew you from before the beginning. That's why if we grasp that reality that God knew you from before the beginning, you'll never ask God why. Because everything that's happening, you just know that all things are working together for my good. I don't understand it. I don't fully comprehend it, but God's working something. You understand that? Now watch this. You were chosen out the world. God's chosen ones are his sons. And you are a company, a company of sons chosen by God. Now Romans 8.14 says, For all who are being led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. That means we have to kind of entrench and imprint that on our minds that we are sons of God. Say amen. Now watch this in 1 Corinthians 1.27, reading on to 29, it says, But God has, watch this, God has chosen the foolish, the stupid things of the world to put to shame, to put to disgrace the wise. And God has chosen the weak, Strengthen things of the world to put to shame the things that are mighty and forcible. So, you see, sometimes when you ask God why, you, you shouldn't be asking Him that question, why? It's not a relevant question. Because God chose you from before the beginning. And I want that to like kind of sink in your heart. God loves you. God loves me. See, our church is a success from before it began. So I'm not afraid it's going to fail. You, your life is a success from the beginning. Now you might have some challenges, but you won't fail. Because God knew you from the beginning. Say amen to that. But God has chosen the foolish, stupid things of the world to put to shame, disgrace the wise. And God has chosen the weak, strengthless things of the world to put to shame the things that are mighty or forcible. The base things of unknown descent, of the world, the things which are despised of no account. God has chosen and the things which are not to bring to nothing, render entirely useless and inoperative the things that are. That no flesh or human nature should glory or boast in His presence before His face. See, God is so committed to you to make you a success that one day you'll have to stand and say, this is just God. And God wants that. God wants that out of our lives for us to stand and say, well, how did you get there? I don't know. How did you achieve what you achieved? I really don't know. 
What do you mean you don't know? It's just God. Isn't that wonderful? Just for us to have that testimony. It's just God. So you have been chosen for great things. Amen. Now I know the enemy has been lying to you. I know different voices have been saying things to you. But I'm saying to you tonight, with the voice of the Spirit of God, you have been chosen for great things. All right? All right, let me just run through. Now the Greek word for chosen is or means to select for oneself. To select for oneself. God selected you for himself. Then there's an addition to that. It says to pick out or to choose out for oneself. That means God chooses out for himself. Doesn't need permission. He doesn't need somebody to give him permission. He doesn't need a reason. He just chooses you out. Say amen. Hallelujah. Now watch John 15, 16. What it says. Now, this is Christ speaking. You understand that. He says, you have not chosen me. I like that. Because many times we kind of we, 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 we respond. I got saved on that day. I accepted the Lord on that day. I began serving the Lord on that day. But Jesus said, hey, you have not chosen me. I'm quoting John 15, 16. He says, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Now that kind of like, you know, uh, re-emphasizes the scripture in Ephesians. He says, I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruits. So I don't know what you've been feeling or what people have been saying, but you are tremendously fruitful. That's why some people don't like you. You understand what I said? That's why some people don't like you, because you're fruitful. Your life convicts them. Did you ever think that some people kind of don't like you just simply because they're envious of what you have? The peace of God. The presence of God. The love of God. Say amen to that. It says, you have not chosen me, but I've chosen you and ordained you that you should go forth and bring forth fruit. And that your fruit should remain. And whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name. The original Greek actually means if you demand it in my name, I'll give it to you. Whatever you demand in my name, I'll give it to you. Now that is a guarantee. It's a guarantee. May we be reminded today, whatever you ask the Father in the name of Jesus, he'll give it to you. What an awesome privilege. Therefore, it should eradicate fear out of our lives. Take away fear out of our lives. Simply because whatever I ask in His name, He'll give it to me. Say amen. All right. Now, let me kind of explain that word in the Greek, chosen. It, it actually, the Greek word is eklegomai, which actually, the root means, it may, you know, there's two words that make up that Greek word. It's ek. E-K and Lego, which actually means kindness, favor, and love. So when God chose you out of the world, what it actually says, God shed, caused kindness to come to you. He caused love to come to you. And He caused favor to come to you. And you responded because of that love, kindness, and favor. Now, if He chose you, with kindness, favor, and love, then he walks in you with kindness, favor, and love. Now I want you to meditate on that. I want you to meditate on that all week, all month, that God's kindness is on me. God's favor is on me. God's love is on me. Say amen. Now watch this. Again, the Bible says, this is my beloved chosen son. You remember when God echoed those words to Christ? This is my beloved son. Actually, it means this is my beloved chosen son. And when God looks at you, this is what he says. This is my beloved chosen son and daughter. All right? Okay. Watch John chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning was the word. 
and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In John 1.14, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory. Well, we, 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 read, we read the Scriptures, and it speaks of the glory of God. It says, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. Now watch this. It ends up by saying, full of grace and truth. It's almost like heaped grace. Heaped favor and kindness towards you. That means every morning we should arise with that, irrespective of our circumstances, the challenges of life. God, your grace is on me. God, your grace and favor is on my life. Say amen. It says, that which was from the beginning, which you have heard, which we have seen with our own eyes, which we've looked upon, and our hands have handled the word of life. 1 John 5, 7, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Revelation 19, 13 says, And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Now watch, I'm, I'm going somewhere with this, so please just pay attention. Jesus is the Word of God. He was the Word of God. He'll always be the Word of God. All right, just hold on to that thought. So to summarize then what I've been saying is that Paul unwrapped the great mystery in Ephesians 1 verse 4. From the foundation of the world, we were in the pre-incarnate Word. Are you with me? So our selection is based not upon the things we have done, but upon the nature of His glory and love. That means God chose you, not because of all the stuff you have done, but God chose you because of His glory and His love. I would like you to please say this out loud. Say, God loves me. Say it one more time. God loves me. Now watch Romans 8.33. <laughs> Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? That's what he's asking about you. Who shall lay any charge against you? The devil comes along and says, hmm. That's what she did. That's what he did. Jesus stands up and says, not guilty. That's why Paul the Apostle asked this question. Who shall lay a charge towards God's elect? And 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 2 says, elect according to the... Now, it calls you elect. It's addressing you. It's an epistle read to the church. It addresses you. It says, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. In other words, you are referred to as God's elect. Now let me explain that term. What does elect mean? Elect means it's also derived from that Greek word eklektos, which means to select, and by implication, also means my favorite. Now, I want to pause there for a minute. That means from all the people God encountered, He looked at you and said, my favorite. Just think about that. And sometimes it's very unfair when we ask God the question, where are you? Why is this happening to me? Why am I encountering what I'm encountering when God says, my favorite? I chose you from before the foundations of the world. You were a word also in the mind of God. You 
existed before time began. And now that you existed before time began and God selected you from, then, from, from that time, chosen you from that time, imagine now that you are in the sheepfold. My beloved, my chosen, my favorite. Think about that. God's Word is telling us, you're my favorite. Isn't that amazing? Just ponder, Sila, pause and think about that. My favorite. God says, my favorite. Yeah, but God, you know, I have these excuses. No, never mind the excuses. You're my favorite. Yeah, but God, you don't understand. This is what they're saying about me. It doesn't really matter. I, you're my favorite. Uh, but, but God, really, they're saying all of these nasty things. Well, they don't know yet, but I know. Well, uh, God, okay, so you know. Yeah, but God's argument is, now that I know, I want you to know. Because if you know, this is God speaking, if you know what I know, then we can walk together. And we can change things. Because Amos asks a question, he says, can any two walk together except they be agreed? So God knows, but we don't know. That's why we're preaching. That's why we're teaching, so that you would know. And the day you get a hold of this truth, and you know, the devil's whipped. And when you know, circumstances are over. When you know, and have this in your mind, I'm just God's favorite. Would you say that with me? Say, I'm God's favorite. I know it's kind of tough when you first say it, but you know, the more you meditate on it and the more you say it, the more it becomes real to you. Like I remember years back, somebody challenged me to say, say I'm a millionaire. This was several years back. I couldn't, I couldn't say it. I could say it about other people. I could say it about someone else. And I, I could say it with absolute ease, but I couldn't say it about myself. So what I did was, I started that in my confession time, in my prayer time. Um, I am a millionaire. I struggled a few times, but as I kept on saying it, it became easier. And from my conscious mind, it dropped into my subconscious mind. Now for me to say, I'm a millionaire, it's easy. Now, that's what I want you to apply. I'm God's favorite. I'm chosen. I'm his favorite. The devil attacks you. Hey, did you not know that from before the foundations of the earth, God chose me? Yeah, but, 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 but look at all the things that are going wrong. Yeah, but don't you understand? I was a word in the mind of God. He chose me before. My mother and father conceived me. Before I was conceived in my mother's womb, God knew me. Now the word knew, I don't have time, but the word knew is a very intimate word. Actually, when it's used in the biblical sense, it's more it has a sexual connotation to it, the word know. So when you, when you use the word know or knew, it means intimate. Now when I say God knew you, there's nothing about you God doesn't know. He knows you big time. He knows something about us that we don't even know. He actually knows the number of hairs on your head right now. And we don't know. Think about that. If you ask me, I, I wouldn't be able to give you an answer. But he knows. Now, he's so vitally, intrinsically involved with you. Say amen to that. All right. So, watch this. But you are chosen, elect generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. 
Now watch Revelation 17, 14. It says, These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb should overcome them, for He is the Lord of lords, the King of kings, and they are with Him that are called and chosen, elect and faithful. Brothers and sisters, you are elected and you are chosen. Elected means handpicked. All right. Are you catching what I'm saying? Now, let, me, let me go a little bit deeper. Now, 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Now, let's say if all what I said to you is true, then Christ existed before the foundations of the earth, right? When Christ came on the scene, all the Old Testament prophets spoke about Christ's coming. When Christ came on the scene, was it the first time that God knew him? No. Christ wrapped himself, watch this, Christ wrapped himself in the flesh and confined himself to time so that he could relate to us. But Christ existed much before. Christ was the beginning. He is the beginning. He shall always be the beginning. And if that is true, when did we exist? We existed. This is big. You've got to catch it. You existed before the foundations of the earth, before anything was ever created. You were a thought in God's mind. When you were conceived in your mother's womb and you were born like you are now, you became wrapped in time. See, Jesus was eternity wrapped in the flesh. His mother Mary wrapped him in swaddling clothes because she related to him naturally. But God related to him eternally. This is my beloved chosen son in whom I'm well pleased. Listen to him. God knew that whether or when they crucified Christ, he could not die. Jesus, he existed from the beginning. That's why Jesus says, you can't kill me. And that's why he willingly went to the cross and died, because on the third day he rose again. That's why when Thomas came, he says, handle me, touch me. Feel me. It is I, the Christ. So how does that relate to you and I? Now this is deep now. You were thought from God. Existing now. Relating in this present world, but tabernacled in a body. That means to say, that when God looks at you, He sees the end from the beginning. He sees divinity in the flesh. The devil looks at you and thinks, just a human being. God looks at you and says, my son, whom I have chosen from before the foundations of the earth. God sees you as more than an overcomer. God sees you as light. God sees you as a salt of the earth. That's why you can cast out devils. That's why you can pray and bring heaven to earth. That's why you can do awesome things. Just because you were from the beginning. That's why when we say goodbye here to this earth, when we graduate in the body, you know, graduate from here. 
and say goodbye to this earthly tabernacle, this body. It's not the end. It's just a continuous existence of what already began. Okay. You, are you catching what I'm saying? Now, having said that, if you have been chosen, handpicked, chosen from the beginning, put on this earth to make an impact, God with you, tabernacled himself in your earthly body, and you have what? The mind of Christ. You have the power of God. Here's a question I'd like to ask you. What can stop us? Nothing. Let me ask you that question again. What can stop us? Can the devil stop us? Circumstances. Problems. Mountains. People that hate you. People that despise you. People that come against you. What can stop you? When God has already seen you as a winner, because He doesn't begin with the beginning, He's, He started with the end in mind. So, watch this. We are a success traveling somewhere. You are a word from God being transported by the Spirit of God to make things happen. That's why wherever you show up, something good happens. And the biggest battle we fight sometimes is the battle of the mind. Because every time when the devil really wants to bring you down and discourage you, where does he attack you? Can't make it think you're going to fail. You can't make it. But God's Spirit says from the inside, hey, you're a champion. But God, you don't understand. It's the people. They're doing this to me. No, 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 no. I'm for you. You have won. As long as I'm on your side, you have won. You have a great life. You're going somewhere. Come on here, somebody. Because you are a word from the beginning. Isn't that awesome? That's why parents, we don't have to stress about our kids. Don't stress about your children. Because if you're a word from God, they are also a word from God. And irrespective of what we do or say, they're going to make it. So the Bible tells us, let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. What mind is that? The mind of Christ. What is the mind of Christ? I am an overcomer. I will succeed because Christ is with me. Greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. The devil attacks you. Hey, Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. Say amen to that. I want you to know when you leave here tonight that you are a word from God. We only look at Jesus as the word, but we are also words from God. See, our parents didn't decide our existence. They played a part in it. To repeat that. Our parents didn't decide our existence. They played a part in it. God decided it. Everything in your life, you have to and will succeed. Let me end with this phrase, because truly we have been chosen. You didn't help me end it. You have been chosen. The word I'm looking for. You have been chosen. Wednesday, discipleship. A little bit deeper. Sunday, we'll get happy. You've been chosen for greatness. I want you to say it. Chosen for greatness. 
Is it dependent on someone? It's dependent on people against you? It's dependent on your employer? It's dependent on the money you have? On your education you have? No, you are just chosen. I want you to say it to two people at least. Say it. Come on, come on, guys. Let me hear you. Let me hear you. Don't be shy. Let me hear you. I have been chosen. Shout it out to me. Come on, come on, come on. Let me hear one more time. Amen. I whisper to your neighbor. Say, you've been chosen for greatness. Now watch me go. Watch me go. Watch me go. I'm going some way. I'm a word from God. I began at the beginning. Hallelujah. I say I began at the beginning. Christ conceived me in his mind. Amen. When he died on the cross, even before I was born and you were born, when I died on the cross, my name was on his mind. <laughs> Think about that. The Bible says our names are imprinted, tattooed in the palm of his hands. He knows us. And what's the devil? He's been lying to us. We're not going to make it. Something bad's going to happen to us. I reject that lie. I reject that in the name of Jesus. I want to decree tonight that that's a lie from the devil. We are going to make it. You are going to make it. God has a great future for you. Say amen. Stand up to your feet. Give the Lord a great hand tonight. Amen. Woo! Glory to God.